up all my five fans so triple g canelo part three in the books and i um i'm gonna say this off the bat it wasn't the greatest fight but it definitely had some entertaining moments you know triple g definitely started off very slow a lot slower and i think some of us kind of anticipated that with his age and such i think a lot of us felt like he wasn't gonna be quite that same triple g that terminator that robocop that straight up just wrecking machine that he's always been in his earlier days when he was just running over guys and he just seemed like he was just i don't know it just felt like he was stunned by the moment or just wasn't sure of himself that's just the feeling i was getting in the beginning of the rounds but then when the um when the rounds started going forward when we started seeing more towards late 7th 8th 9th 10th 11th 12th he started turning it on and that's when we started kind of seeing like oh wait a minute wait a minute triple g is not getting older triple g is not getting tired and triple g is not um gonna try to not just gonna sit back and lose this fight he actually turned up the fight on canelo you know he actually moved went in and actually took some chances later on there he was actually starting to throw his jab more throw the straights more throw a little bit more power shots gonna you know he was get definitely get it in there and um as far as canelo goes canelo was looking very very good Again, in the first beginning of the rounds, he was just landing some really good power shots. He did start off a little slower, and towards the end of the rounds, I can see him feeling... It almost felt like he was getting started to get a little fatigued. There was something off there, and I'll get into that right now. I'll get into why, but it just felt like there was something off about Canelo when he was going in, in into the later rounds. Like, he was getting tired, like he was getting winded. And we saw that in the Dimitri Bivol fight, and... um. You know, we didn't see that too much with the Billy Joe Saunders, with the Caleb Plant, with the Daniel Jacobs. We didn't see that too much. And Canelo ain't an old guy. Canelo, I think he's like 32, 33 years old. You know, he's still relatively young. So with that being said, um, still very good fight. You know, very high technical fight. I know we were all thinking it was going to possibly be a brawl and whatnot. But, you know, Canelo definitely turned it on him on, on him in the beginning rounds. Triple G later on turned it on himself. There was a few moments where I was like, whoa, I think someone might get a stoppage here. Maybe not like not 100 percent, but there was just, you know, I think if Canelo maybe unleashed just a little bit more and or Triple G possibly unleashed a little bit more. These guys just had so much respect for each other in the ring. They had so much respect for their abilities, for their techniques, for their power that they did not want to take too much chances. They want to take enough chances to get that win, but they didn't want to take too much because they they know each other. I mean, right now, they just went 36 rounds with each other, you know, and if we could say whatever we want about those two fights. Um, but yeah, Canelo definitely won this fight. Canelo definitely won this one. He got the nod on this one. Um, Triple G was definitely climbing up, though. He was climbing up. Who knows what would have happened if he decided to start a little bit earlier, just a little bit. So being with that being said, it definitely was a very entertaining fight. I wouldn't put it up there as um, like a Gaddy Ward fight. I wouldn't put it up there as the best trilogy of all time, but definitely a very, very most watched trilogy. You know, I definitely um, enjoyed every single moment of it. I love both both of them. I think my favorite one out of all of them now would probably be that second one. The second one seemed like just a tad bit more exciting. This one, I felt like just, it literally was like, you look at the first one, Triple G was literally doing everything that um, Canelo was doing to him in this third fight. But unfortunately, it went to a draw. Then the, the tables turned, you know, Triple G started backing up a little bit in the later rounds in the second fight, and that's how Canelo got the nod, and this one, Canelo completely just turned it on and was fading just a little bit in the later rounds where Triple G turned it on, and that's how he, um, unfortunately, still lost. He did turn it on, the, you know, that power, the speed, he started move, started getting more aggressive, but unfortunately, it was a little too, um, too little too late. Um, but Canelo did mention about the fact that he has a hand injury right now. I know guys, we all say like, Hey, you know, maybe it could be excuses or whatnot. You never know. You never know. But Canelo did mention that. And it could be a possibility because guys think about it. When did Canelo ever take a day off or not day off? Excuse me. Time off. You know, we look at his career and he's just been literally nonstop over and over and over and over again. Sometimes he's even fought three times in the year. The guy really doesn't take like a year, maybe even two years off. You know, he, which he should have, you know, he's earned that right. He like right now he's literally only lost two fights and, you know, he did mention in this, um, interview, the post fight interview that he does want a rematch with, uh, Dimitri Bevel, but he also has a hand injury that he wants to heal. 
And guys, you know, he's a boxer. It's not like an MMA fighter where he can train different things. Like, no, his, like, literally 99.9% of his whole game is hands. So he needs them. So, yeah, I definitely um, agree with Canelo. I think he should take some time off. I don't think he should go in that Bilbao fight. That Bilbao fight is never going to go anywhere. Bilbao is definitely, I believe, is a high, um, a very, very talented athlete, very talented boxer. I do believe he's going to win his upcoming match in November. Um, but be that as it may, I do feel like what's next for Canelo is just time off, time rest. You know, he is a star. He is never going to de um, demeanor. His star is never going to go down. He is always going to be a name. He's always going to be a big boxing superstar, regardless of what anybody thinks or says. He's always going to be someone's pound for pound. Um, doesn't have to be everybody's, but still. As far as Triple G goes, you know, he, like I said, in the, if the way he started, if he started like that and ended like that, then I would definitely say, hey, you know what? It's time to hang it up, man. It's time to hang it up. But at the end of the day, no. He says no. He still wants to continue. He wants to go back down to middleweight and he wants to start fighting and collecting all those balance down there. And there's no shame in that, guys. Just because you cannot beat that number one pound for pound guy, just because you can't beat this this um, challenger doesn't mean you have to quit. You know, there's, that's it. Like, hey, you know what? This guy's the king of the 160-pound division. He can go up to 175 pounds. I'll go down to middleweight and do my thing there like he did all the for majority of his career. You look at his career, and he completely just dominated it all the damn time. He was always on there, always just constantly just um, steamrolling over everybody. It was always him and Bernard Hopkins. As a matter of fact, I think he actually passed Bernard Hopkins' career. As far as who I want to see him go against, um, the one, there's a list of names on there. There's a list of names on there. Or he can actually stay at 168, too. You know, who knows? Maybe we can actually get another one. I don't think any of us really want to see it. We did see it with... Uh, uh, Marquez and Pacquiao, you know, that first fight, draw, second fight, Pacquiao barely won, third fight, Pacquiao won again, and here we are, part four, Pacquiao gets knocked out, so you never know, it could be a possibility, you can never um, exclude that, but yeah, if I was a Triple G, maybe, yeah, maybe he can actually move up in weight, um, because there's, I don't see a whole lot more to do at middleweight, because like I said, he already, he already conquered that, he already did that. There's literally no other point to do that again. Maybe he could try to do it again at 168. That would be fun. Or he could go at one um, at uh, 160 and meet a few other guys. Like some of these up-and-comers. I know there's there's the Charlo brothers out there. And then I know there's even talks of like Errol Spence even at one point. Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford uh, talked about at one point moving on up. So who knows? Maybe he can meet some of these guys. There's always options for Triple G. 100% options for Triple G. As far as Canelo goes, I think the only option for him right now, of course, is to rest. As far as another an opponent goes, I don't think I want to see him go against Dimitri Bilbao. Or maybe, right not right away. I do want to. I guess the way it would work is I would love to see him against the new up-and-coming David, B David Benavides. That would be actually a pretty fun fight for um, to take place. Or if he uses this time off, uses this time off that he does to build on the muscle, to pack on the weight the right way, to use that time to get some size in him and be able to uh, get comfortable with that size. Like I said, maybe he won't come by, back by May next year. Maybe it will be September next year. You know, maybe a whole year, just complete rest and get himself that time that he needs to, um, to pack on all that muscle and pack on all that mass and just do what he needs to do to get there. So we can see Dimitri Bivol and we can see an actual light heavyweight Canelo. Because Canelo pretty much didn't really cut weight. He was just walked in there as a light heavyweight when he fought these guys. But now this is a time where he can actually maybe pack on all that muscle, pack on all that mass, and get ready and train. Kind of like what Roy Jones did back in the day when he fought at heavyweight. And see what he can do now to fight Dimitri Bivol at light heavyweight. That's a possibility. Or he can stay down. And go against these guys like David Benavides, like a, uh, Jamal Charlo. Um, these guys up there, these rising up and comers too. And who knows, maybe he can meet a uh, catch weight for like an Errol Spence or a Terrence Crawford because these guys are always talking about possibly win up because, you know, you got the name. You know, I know those two guys want to be su big superstars. They got a fight coming up in November. And unfortunately, they're even though it's a very much anticipated fight, even though it's going to be a very good fight, but they just don't have that big name, big name that they need. And maybe they could use that Triple G or uh, Canelo star power and get their name out there. 
Because, you know, hell, if you were to get Errol Spence or Terrence Crawford packing on all that muscle mass or being able and being comfortable at the at middleweight or something, you're telling me you wouldn't want to see that? I would. That would be a actually a very fun, exciting fight. Or another option, and I really don't think I like this, but I know there was always this talks for Canelo to move up to cruiserweight. And guys, I really don't think he should do that. I really don't think so. That, I believe he is just going to get hurt. We've seen what he what happened to him at Dmitry Bivol um, and even Sergey Kovalev. Even though he won against Sergey Kovalev, he, I felt like he was kind of losing because Sergey was able to overpower him. But now you're talking about, at 175, you're talking about almost 25 pounds more? Ugh, that's that's tough. That's really tough. So who knows? Who knows what's going to happen with um, Triple G? Who knows what's going to happen with uh, Canelo? I would like to know what you guys think. What do you think is going to happen for Triple G next? What do you think is going to happen for Canelo next? Let me know in the comments, guys. Like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.